Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today let's talk about self-soothing. How do we start this? So often people don't know how to regulate their emotions. The way we learn to do that, if we weren't taught in childhood properly, right, is to self-soothe. Watch this video. everybody welcome to my channel if you're new please click the subscribe button the bell to receive notifications when i release new videos and if you've been with me for a while as always thank you so much and welcome back let's dive into this today <clears throat> a lot of people get frustrated because they understand that that's what i have to do but how do i do it right i'm all about integrating the work in your day-to-day -day so it becomes your natural new habits and when we talk about emotional dysregulation when you're getting you're having anxiety and you start to have these terrible thoughts or you start to grab for the drink or look for someone to date or whatever it is that you do, inner critic, all the things are symptoms. We have so many symptoms in our life of dysregulation, of not knowing how to regulate our own emotions. Many people tend to go to a partner to regulate them and that's dependent and that's okay for a while, but if you don't know how to do it yourself, that's dependent. It's not good. So what happens when that relationship ends or that per person leaves? You're in a state of complete anxiety and shutdown, right? So you don't want to do that. We really want to learn how to regulate ourselves. And the way that we learn how to regulate ourselves when we're babies, if we had this, is emotional mirroring. Oh, I see what you feel. It makes sense. Let's talk about it. Oh, let me just cuddle you if you don't feel good. Many of us didn't get that, especially not consistently, right? Because we had situations in life where our parents were not perfect. And so we have to truly learn how to reparent in that way of self-soothing. And I look back at my childhood and, you know, I make all these sweatshirts and sweatpants and stuff, by the way, this one is tagged below. Um, I make that because that was what I did as a kid. Ask my mother, she'll say she didn't wear anything but sweats. And I was such a skinny little kid that I'd have to get every pair of sweatpants taken in. So I literally had a closet full of like designer clothes when I was a child, just because I had to get them custom made or taken in and they were all sweats. It was so hilarious to me. Except for my one pair of Mickey Mouse jeans that my mom bribed me to go to preschool. She would give me the jeans if I went to preschool. First and only pair of jeans I probably ever wore for the majority of my upbringing. But back to the point, I look at that and I'm like, I was self-soothing. So this is the whole key. Self-soothing is about comfort, getting comfort. I have a client that smokes pot every single night. She can't stop. She went to hypnotherapy, didn't work out. I said, well, hypnotherapy didn't work for you because it's not one reason you do it. There's multiple, let's say, unresolved issues that you self-soothe through pot smoking, which is taking you away from the feelings, right? And by the way, I had another client that was like, well, wait, I smoke pot for my epilepsy. I'm like, totally different story. It's not an addiction. You're not doing it to escape. So this is what I'm saying, putting it into context. But it's really about comfort. Because I asked this client, why do you really think that you do that? Obviously, I know the reason, right? And she does too. And she goes, comfort. I said, yeah, from the emotions you don't know how to regulate. So we need comfort when we're trying to regulate our emotional self. What does that mean, Candace? I don't even know. Nothing will give me comfort when I'm in this state. So we have to already front load ourselves with knowing we have our comforting things around us. But for me, what I do is I put on my sweats and I get a blankie and I put on the fireplace if it's appropriate or if it's, you know, around me. And I read something that inspires me, that uplifts me, to put me back into my vortex, put me back into a place where I am comforting myself. Now, a lot of you are probably going to reject that at first because you think you need it from someone else. You think you need it from mom and dad. It's that inner child that's like, I just want to be parented. And sometimes we don't know we're even like able to do it ourselves. We don't know that we deserve it if we didn't get it. That's a big hurdle to get over. But let's pretend that you're listening to this video and you're like, I don't care if I think I deserve it or not. What do I do? You put on the sweats, whatever is comfortable for you, your favorite shirt, the t-shirt your dad gave you, your boyfriend, whoever. I don't know. You put on the clothes that make you feel most comfy. You, What I like to also do is bake. I notice I'm like, oh gosh, I'm in my zone when I'm like eating hot chocolate, drinking hot chocolate or baking something. So I'm like, this is comforting to me. Or I make sure my doggy's close or I... Um, give myself a facial, like what can I do to pamper myself to feel comfortable when I'm not feeling comfortable? 
When my emotions aren't feeling good, how can my physical body feel good to be a vessel of comfort to hold for my emotions, right? I also do a lot of tapping, right? I've got many videos on that. I've got packages of tapping, right? People love that. Tapping. I don't suggest meditating when you're already dysregulated because how the hell are you supposed to sit and close your eyes and met? No, it doesn't work for people, right? So I'm just saying real world things. My emotions are dysregulated. How do I find comfort in my physical world reality, my mental, my spiritual? So that's what I do. I start saying affirmations, thinking positive things, thinking, thinking of what I'm grateful for, realizing that this huge abandonment wound is up or whatever it is that's dysregulating you, and also knowing that you have the ability to not let it control you by taking control and putting yourself into a comfort zone, right? What you're wearing, what you're looking at, what you're reading, the thoughts you're having, who's around you, what friend can you call, what animal can you hold? Comfort, comfort, comfort. And when you get yourself into a physical comforting position, it's safer to allow yourself to feel those things Little by little, I call it structured healing approach. You don't want to fall on, go into it, but you want to acknowledge I'm not feeling good. Is it safe for me to feel this alone or should I call a friend? Should I go to my coach? What should, I, should I watch a video? Should I listen to a podcast? Should I read a book? It's not like taking yourself out of it. It's getting yourself comfortable enough to sustain what is going on. You're going to start to notice that you regulate when you let yourself feel safe in the unsafe emotions. Try it for me. I like to tell people to close their eyes and make sure you're in a safe space. Tell yourself, no one can take anything from me or do anything from me. What's happened has happened. I'm in a space where I can now feel what happened or deal with what happened by talking myself through it. I also say, get a pad of paper, get a pen and write it out. I am feeling super dysregulated. Oh my God, I feel like shit. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. I need to go reach out to this person. This is what I want to do. And then write, why would doing that make me feel better? I'll feel connection. I won't feel alone in it. Cool. Why do I feel like this so much? What wound is this triggering that's unresolved that I don't have peace with yet? My client I'm talking about, the one that likes to smoke pot, she has what I, you know, dove into. She has an unresolved experience from literally decades ago that she still holds on to. And, and one of the things, you guys, that dysregulates us is people we don't want to let go of that are already gone. Think about that. And what we have to realize is we're staying connected to them in our head to not have to feel the pain of the abandonment that already occurred so long ago. So if we can get ourselves to be like, it's already gone, it's safe to look at. You're already fine. It's safe. Realize you're already fine. You don't feel fine. But I'm fine. I'm in my house. I'm in a comfort zone. I've got the bubble bath rolling, I've got the fire rolling, I've got the food cooking, I've got the books I want to read, I've got things to nourish me, to fill the void I'm about to feel by the dysregulated emotions. You need to be seen by yourself, you need to connect with something higher. Try this, you guys. If you need more support and you need some EFTs or something, please check out my website, I have all of that going on for you. Um, also, I always have discounts going on. So if you have any issues with that, email me, right? But I want you to really take this in. Comfort your body so your emotions feel safer. Check it out. You also have to remember, though, when you were dysregulated at home, you didn't feel safe in your environment. That is why it's very important to start to really anchor in a self-safety. I hope this reaches you guys. I hope you can share with at least one other person who might need this information today. Please check out my website. Please check out my Instagram for my daily reels. I should also mention classes are open. I Am Worthy is still open if you want to join us. Emotional Rehab starts in March. That is a game changer. If you have not done that yet, Emotional Rehab is the game changer starting in March this year. Open for enrollment. Inner Work 1, Inner Work 2, get on the roster. We are monthly. If you guys want my weekly group coaching and healing, the Truth Room is the place to be. My monthly membership, Fridays, we meet every single week live. You have four years of material to go through, videos to watch, healings to witness. So check out the truth room. Other than that, I just love you guys so much, and I'm wishing you so much safety within, and I'll see you in the next video.